Hello everyone, Mr. Kozlov here to talk about our Monday and Tuesday lessons from this week. These are the first two lessons of the year. We're going to be talking about area and perimeter. And I want you to remember, because this is a video, you can start and stop this anytime that you like. So if there's a part of this I go over you don't understand, please feel free. Start it, stop it, stop it, start it. Figure out what it is you need to know. First off, we are working on perimeter and area. I'm going to start talking just about perimeter. Perimeter is the outside of a closed shape. So I said in class, if you are thinking about fencing in a yard, then you are looking at the outside of that yard, the fence itself. When we talk about area, we're talking about the interior or what it is that you did fence in. So area is the inside, perimeter is the outside. The way to figure the perimeter is to take all sides of that shape and add them together. So if you happen to have a 4 here and a 12 here, then you're also going to have a 4 here and a 12 here. Add all four of those together, that gives you the perimeter of your fence. So I'm going to start with that square rectangle parallelogram triangle and remind you that when you are doing perimeter, you are only interested in the outside shape of that figure. For instance, when I look at this triangle as my second example, you see a dotted line in the center. That dotted line represents the actual height of that triangle, and that has nothing to do with perimeter. Perimeter is only the outside shape of whatever that closed end object is. So for example, if I have something here that is a length of 14, if this side is 14, then this side is also 14. If this side is three centimeters, then this side is three centimeters. Add all four of those up, you get the proper answer. For a triangle, even though there are four numbers that are here, only three of those numbers are what we use for the perimeter. I'm gonna use the eight, the eight, and the 20. The seven meters is the height of that triangle, and we don't use that for perimeter. Now, if we were speaking about area, that would be a different idea, and we'll get to that momentarily. If I go to the center here, we're gonna talk about the perimeter of other polygons. First of all, when you see lines that are perpendicular to the actual shape of the sides, that means they're all the same. So to have these four lines here that are on all four of those square sides, that means they are all the same. So when you see that, we're talking about meaning the same. So that's six and six and six and six. And on a regular rectangle, again, remember, if the width is nine inches, the other side is nine inches. If this is 10, this is 10, and that gives you your total for that perimeter. Even if you have a five-sided shape, especially when you see those perpendicular lines, that means all five of those are the same. Thus, five written five times gives you that answer. And then again on a triangle, I want to remind you all that when you see dotted lines, those are invisible lines. So when we are talking about perimeter, all we want are the three sides of the triangle. We don't worry about the height of the triangle, we're only worried about the actual three solid lines that create that triangle. So 24, 17, and 9 would give me the total perimeter for that particular shape. When I get down to the very bottom two in our lesson from today, we talk specifically about area. So perimeter is found by adding the outside, Area is found by multiplying two of those sides together to give you the answer. That would be for rectangles, parallelograms, and for uh, rectangles and squares. Sorry, lost my train of thought. So when I try to do the area of a rectangle, it is length times width. I take those two numbers, I multiply them, and that gives me my answer. I want you to remember that we are also multiplying the centimeters. So if I have centimeters times centimeters, my answer needs to be centimeters squared <coughs> because I have multiplied those centimeters together. 
or a triangle. If I went back up to the top, if I went back up to the top, no, it's not going to let me go. You would see that the area of a triangle is length times width or base times height divided by 2. The reason for that is if you notice a triangle, a triangle is half. Well, I can't draw worth, worth anything here. A triangle is half of a four sided object, which is why you have to take base times height and then divide it by two. So in order to do that, we need to know the height of the object. And to find the height of the object, we have to have a right angle. So I'm gonna make a right angle sign here, and whatever two lines that that right angle sign touches, that would be my base and my height. So in other words, I'm not using this side, I'm not using this side. I'm gonna use the base, because that's where one of those right angle signs touches, and I'm gonna use the height, which is where the other right angle sign touches. That would be 20 times seven. And once I get that, I still have to divide that by two because it's a triangle. Hope that makes sense for area. Same story here for the area of these two items. A parallelogram's height is different than the actual parallel sides. So in other words, what I want to show you is if this is your base and this is one of the sides of that parallelogram, notice where the tip of my finger is and I'm going to move this arm. Here's the tip of this finger. But if I was to raise that to a 90 degree angle, here's the tip of my finger for what is not the height but the length of this side. So again, the height is down here. The length of this other side is way up here. So what I'm looking at then is finding the height of the parallelogram, not whatever this number is. So again, when I do the base times height, I'm looking for this right angle. Bear with me here. I'm looking for this right angle that would be here that won't work on my page, and the height is four yards, and the base is this nine yards, because if this is nine, then this needs to be nine. So that gives me nine times four. I don't divide anything by two, because it's not a triangle. It's a parallelogram, okay? And if I wanted triangles, I would have to split this into two, which I haven't done. So once again, make sure you realize that this nine is the same as this nine, and because that's the base I'm using, I'm gonna use this as my base, I'm gonna use this as my height, and this one yard doesn't mean anything. All it does is make a proper right angle. Once again, remember that those dotted lines are invisible, they're not really there. They are there to create that height. Just like with this triangle that's our next one, where I see that the height is six meters. There's my right angle, okay? So six meters, and there's the line I'm using, which is the 11. 11 times six divided by two gives me that answer.